Today we'd like to show you a couple of different reports that you can run. Specifically, we like to run some of these reports at the end of a particular winter ski season or fiscal year to get a feel for your performance. So uh, the first one I'm going to talk about is customer demographics. The customer demographics dashboard is able to be generated from any saved list in List Builder. Uh, one that I like to do is do kind of a snapshot and overall view of all of the visitors within the current season. So you can select uh, all season pass holders and or the season's transactional event dates in your query. And then what you'll see is a demographic dashboard of the guests that uh, visited your resort in that time frame. You'll be able to see um, who the guest is, where they come from, and a little bit about their spend history with you. This is a great way to not only get a feel for your overall guest demographics, but you can also build a few other views to understand a core or valuable segments, such as build um, a specific dashboard for your current pass holders, and you can compare pass holder demographics to your overall guest mix. You can pull high value guests like RFM score of 15 or any other specific persona segments that you have. So you can kind of compare and contrast uh, the different demographics uh, across the different segments of, of guests. What you want to look for in this report are, uh, I'll kind of go from top to bottom here. So you can see the number of guests, the number of families. You can see the emailable and mailable counts. You'll also be able to see the percentage of family to non-family and females to males or unknown in gender. So you get a little bit of a feel of who the guest is. You can see where they're from. Uh, if there's a MSA or state, um, you'll be able to see up to the top 10 MSAs and states. And then spend and value at the bottom. You can see uh, our guests high or low spenders or are they kind of in the middle? Are guests spending a, a high amount of, of money with you? Um, and also, are the guests really active? Are they known to you? Or did your segment have a lot of new guests, which would be your trial list? In this view, we're seeing that a lot of guests that were previously lapsed or lost visited in this particular date range. So that's an interesting insight. And then you can also see the age breakdown in the bottom right quadrant. If you like what you saw, Check out some of our other top recommendations for end of season reporting, or don't hesitate to reach out to Partner Success or your strategic account manager for more information. At the end of the season, you may want to take a look at the growth of your database by looking at our database growth report, which you can find under our reports and general section in Intopia Marketing Cloud. And this will show the growth of customers, emails, address capture, and phone number capture over the entire prior year of the date range that you put into the report. So you'll see total in the database plus the monthly, quarterly, and year-over-year -year growth for customers, but also for your email, address, and phone number capture rates. I really like to look at end-of-season reporting, and there's two specific reports I'm going to show today regarding email campaign performance. The first one is our email campaign dashboard. A lot of times our partners like to look at this report every week or every month, but I like to recommend pulling an end of season summary of all of the campaign performance uh, this season to date. So whatever your season is, plug in the applicable date ranges. In this case, we're looking at the beginning of November through the end of March. And what I like about this report is it gives a really nice summary of not only how your campaigns did and all of the different KPIs, but how, how you paced compared to prior year in the year over year column. So it gives a nice comparison analysis as well as uh, a summary of the, the season's KPIs. So what to look for here specifically, starting from the top, you can look at the quantity of campaigns plus the quantity of campaigns delivered. So did you have a percent increase or decrease over uh, the previous year? Was the email marketing channel leveraged more or less than previous year? So you can kind of follow that trend line. Uh, in the middle section under open rate and click rate, you can look at your engagement KPIs. So this is a great way to keep tabs on your uh, overall health of your emails over the course of the year was the open rate and click rate trending up or down and how did that compare with the prior year 
The next section, you can take a look at your kind of uh, negative KPIs, I guess I would call them, is, you know, was the bounce rate trending down? Um, was the opt-out rate staying flat or trending down? So making sure that, you know, your emails are making it to the inbox and that people are staying opted in. Um, conversion is covered towards the bottom of the graph. So was your overall attributed revenue uh, to email up or down from the previous season? And also keeping tabs on your ROI, the return on investment stats, um, was the clicked revenue per email and the earned uh, dollars per email up or down compared with previous. And over on the bottom right, I always like to highlight and take a look at what were the top five revenue generating emails of the season and make sure that these ones are in line with the core promotions that you were running, that they're in line with your expectations. And if there is a campaign that you would expect to be here and it wasn't, um, maybe taking a deeper dive into, you know, why was that? So the next report that I like to look at after I look at the campaign dashboard report is a deeper dive into all of the emails um, over the course of the season. So for this report, the email statistic summary report, you can find that under reports and under campaigns. And this gives you all of the email campaigns and a really detailed summary of all of the different performance metrics for each of those campaigns. What I like to do is focus in on those high performing campaigns and those high performing automations based on revenue, but you can base it off of other KPIs that are important to you. You can take this campaign um, dash or this campaign statistics report, pull it into Excel, um, add a filter tab to the um, header row there, like I've done here. And this is where you're going to get a you know, a great deal of flexibility. So you can sort the types of campaigns by campaign name. So you can pull together anything that you've labeled as, you know, program or automation and look at high performing um, automated emails or lifecycle emails. You can filter down into newsletters or snow reports or anything like that that you want to group together. Then you can also look at your conversion section over on the right and look at revenue. You can filter from highest to lowest, or you can do um, you know, anything above a certain amount. And you can look at top revenue driving emails for your, you know, your real star performer campaigns and campaigns that you know that you're going to want to repeat again next season. So um, take a look at your high performers, but don't forget about you know, the low performers as well. So if there's campaigns you were thinking were going to perform really well, but you know, really didn't, make sure you're taking a look at those as well. Adjust and evaluate or maybe possibly eliminate those campaigns and go with something that might perform a little bit better in the next season. If you have surveying, it's great to take a look at your survey results in the moment and week by week, as you probably are, but it's great to also take a look at your overall survey performance using the NPS dashboard report. So this is another one page report view that can be found under our reports dashboard section in Entopia Marketing Cloud, and it analyzes the overall net promoter score or NPS of the survey results in any date range that you put in here. Um, as a reminder, NPS is the industry standard metric used to gauge customer satisfaction. Referencing the survey question, how likely are you to recommend our product or our service or our resort to a friend, family member, or colleague? And NPS is calculated by the percent of promoters minus the percent, percent of detractors. So in the NPS dashboard, if you're pulling it for the end of the season, you can take a look at the overall net promoter score for the entire season and how that compared with the previous period or the previous year and see if you're pacing up or down. You can also take a look over on the right hand side at the NPS score over time and it breaks out how things were moving up and down within the season. You'll also get a look at the total responses in the period. So you can see if the total number of survey respondents was in line or up or down compared with the previous period or compared with the over year. In the bottom section, you can take a look at your high value promoters, detractors, fence sitters, or new cheerleaders. So this is a great way to see, are these guests known to your resort in conjunction with their sentiment? And the NPS versus RFM, kind of game board report over here on the far right will show you in a nice bubble chart um, where people are sitting in comparison with their RFM score. So that is the guest's overall value to your resort or company. So the recency, frequency, and monetary spend score alongside of their NPS score. So you can see where people are in relation to their overall experience with your resort and their net worth or how valuable they are to you. 
Another report you may want to look at at the end of the season is your lodging PACE report. So this report's located under reports and the dashboards tab. And this report analyzes year over year performance for total revenue, total reservations, and total room nights. The really unique thing about this report that we like is that it also breaks out your revenue by month and also by subseason. So you're able to look into each individual month or particular holiday or non-holiday season to see where your revenue was up or down compared with the previous year. At the bottom of the report, it also shows your top five and bottom five data points by particular grouping. Uh, this report is great because it shows advanced booking behaviors, year-over-year -year pacing trends, and as, it also lets you uh, customize your export based on different areas that are important to you. So these results can be grouped not only by the market segment like we have here, but you can also show um, overall top five and mark and year over year change by state, by metropolitan statistical area, property, or source of business. So this report really gives you a lot of different um, pivots that you can take a look at depending on what you're looking for and what your reservations team is looking at. Another report that we really like for lodging is the booking window reports. So this report can be found under our reporting tab under the lodging specific area. And this report shows the number of reservations booked during a particular time frame prior to this day. So this really dives a little bit further into the advanced booking window. And again, this report can really be broken out um, not only by region, by MSA like we have here, but the results could also be grouped by guest trait, by city, by country. So you can move this data around so you can look at your advanced booking window in a lot of different ways. In this way, it kind of complements the lodging pacing report that we had earlier by allowing you to take a deeper dive into the advanced booking window and average daily rates, um, total number of rooms, and total number of bookings for each of the advanced booking windows.